All right, YouTube, we're going to play one more league. Not tonight. Yeah, I'd like to let you have a 2-1 beater over a random card any day. Um, I haven't tried it yet, Tom. I do plan on giving it a whirl here in a little bit. So, yeah, when you're playing against these derpy, like, the blue decks, those blue temple decks, they can be kind of annoying because they can, like, remand Gurmag Angler, and that's pretty big. I should, like, throw together a Dun Shadow list, though, just to try it. Like, maybe it's good right now. I don't know. I just don't necessarily see what, what it does. I mean, it beats, it destroys combo decks. Like, it is the best deck at beating the degenerate combo decks. I don't know. Oh, uh, I would like to pay first, yes. Uh, this hand's, like, not super great, but I'm going to keep it because it could be, like, if we hit a Street Wraith, it's pretty explosive. Like, two Death Shadows, like, I usually don't like keeping four lands, but we're going to do that this time. And we're on the play. We have a sweet Serum Visions card, too. Oh, wow. Both of those are what we're looking for here. Hopefully my opponent plays, like, What did Foothills? What did Foothills? Could be Ponza. Could be like a Jun deck. I think I'm just gonna play a Shadow and hold up a Stubborn Denial in case my opponent's sandbagging a Lightning Bolt right here. At least make them untap to kill this thing. If they're going to try to do it here at the end step. God, if they're playing something like Ponza, I'm going to feel so bad for not jamming the second one. It looks like exactly what's going on here. Tap two mana. Oh, we're playing against Dredge. No way, Jose. They're going to be able to dredge back alone. I guess I probably could have let them have that because they're not doing any dredging. This is a little dangerous, but I'm going to assume that they have more cards in their hand. They have a Creeping Chill. Oh, that sucks. So I guess we just take Blood Gast. Because they're going to get either of them back. This was the risk in doing this. I figured they had like another Cathartic Reunion because they didn't discard a Dredger, so their hand's not very good, so they had to have something going on. I don't really want them to have the Amalgam back. So I guess we just give them the Blood Ghast. Attack here. Shoot. Oh, man, I would like move too quickly and didn't go to there. That was a super mistake. That was a super duper mistake there. Ugh. Just moving too fast. I'm gonna be so sad if we lose by if we can't kill our opponent by three points. Oh, that was so bad. Alright, so they hit a chill. You gonna do it? This is the thing, yeah, so now they're just dead. My opponent is actually just dead because they got a loam and we're going to dismember something unless they unless they don't put anything in well then I'm just going to dismember my own death shadow yeah so their hand is amalgam creeping chill and then whatever land they just returned what did foothills
it's literally it's wooded foothills amalgam so we just like take this I guess I'll just block and then shock myself I don't really see how this goes bad was very confused there and was likely super over overthinking it okay so we do have we do have five really solid ones to bring in six so I know that the dredge decks have played leyline of the void so I think I'm gonna shave an angler we're gonna bring in these six cut some removal then cut some snap casters you know snap caster plus surgical is a way to win there's not a way to win but it's a way to get ahead on the draw my discard spell is probably not that great let's go let's try this Let's give this a whirl. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad of a like the more that I think about it, the more that I don't think it's that bad. Because like they just fall into line of decks that can like never be battle rage. Um they have like a high fail rate anyways, and they're a deck that can be soft to discard spells. Then after sideboard, we get like a lot of really good cards. Like this hand here is just the absolute nut. They mulligan too. Like, like, while Creeping Chill is, like, good for the dredge decks, I don't see what inherent problem with the deck it actually fixes. Like, it does not make the deck more consistent. If anything, it makes the deck less consistent. It does not dredge as well. Like, you cut a land and a dredger and then some other cards for it. Like, it just can't be all that great. Yeah. Like... It is a good card. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I just don't see... I don't see, like, how it makes the deck more aggressive. We're going to find lands with these Serum Visions. Yeah, we are all about... We are on team hashtag free spell. Um, I don't think we want any of these. Yeah, if they hit a bunch of them, then, like, yes, we can get cheesed out for sure. So they hit a conflagrate. And they have a loan now. We're just going to hold on here. I could have said, I probably should have cycled for to hit a surgical or hit a, um, hit a whatever it is. Hit surgical or, um, stubborn denial. But this is just, this is again, this is just like not, my opponent's not doing anything.
So we have Blood Crypt, Mire, Stomping Grounds, One Unknown. I don't think I've played this game super well. I think I could have used my Street Wraith better. Okay, so there's Blood Crypt. Let me play Tapped. So we have a Blood Crypt left. They can like dredge loam, get loam up to four. Then they can get loam. We're pretty stone dead to like, I don't really know what we're exactly dead to. I don't think we're good. I think we're just good. Because they can loam up to seven cards. So they can loam up to six cards, play a land of five cards. And then that just doesn't work. Yeah, my opponent's super dead. We didn't even draw a sideboard. Like my opponent didn't multiply. They don't even get to dredge here. But again, I just don't see like chill is cute. Like it is nice. Like it's it's like Assassin's Trophy. Like literally, creeping chill equals Assassin's Trophy. It's a card that these decks are going to play because it adds like it, it's good in the deck. But it doesn't do anything that's inherently like that fixes something. Okay, so they hit a chill. And they can't chill me. I guess they can. Yeah, like, they were dead either way they did it, man. But the chill is, it, it's like, again, it's good. It just doesn't fix the issue of the deck is that it's not consistent. That it's very, it's volatile. So, like, don't go nuts over cards that don't, that, like, a card that just improves your deck at what it does isn't going to dramatically change it. It's just going to give it a slight mush. It'd be one thing if, like, Jun could play Death Shadow and not jump through a bunch of hoops to play it. They could just, if, like, Death Shadow was just, like, a normal threat, then the Jun decks would be very good. Or if Scavenging Ooze was, like, a 5-5 five -five automatically. Heater. I'm going to check out what they're doing. Hit them with an inky. Wish this was a thought seize. Warm and hot. So we're playing expanse spirits. It's kind of a tough one. The deck that can never beat Battle Rage. But they play Reflector Mage. So we're going to take this. Wow. We're going to take Noble Hierarch and then push a Noble Hierarch. That might have been greedy. But I put them, like, it kind of blanks these two cards. I'd like to find another discard spell to deal with this. Uh, Reflector Mage. Now nah, there's, I'm 100% doing this, so. And the nice thing is that we'll be able to get both shadows down. Actually working on something else. Yeah, I would agree with that there, but that's just because the black green decks are just not that good. It just like they have an inherent flaw in them where you know they just they can't win the game effectively. Alright, so let's get two of these guys in play. It is kind of annoying that my opponent, if they hit a land here, can go like reflector mage and then copy the reflector mage. But we get two looks at a land to try to break that up.
Isn't good. Mage my shadow. Oh. Uh. It's just like a regular Bant Company deck, I guess. Oh, well, that's not a bad draw. Like, they might, you know, hit it with the Shadow. They might, like, Reflector Mage it back, but at least they're not Reflector Maging back my Death Shadow. It does kind of suck that my opponent's got to have a good, solid play here no matter what, but we just need to start, like, we have to just start applying pressure. And we're just going to delve our entire graveyard. Delve full retail because we might as well keep it intact. Oh, looks like I'm going to company. I think it's right for my opponent to bounce my shadow here. Or, like, because they know I have the other shadow. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is a good play for my opponent. Wow, they have a path too? Jeez. Man. That's a beating. I guess I got greedy. Yeah, we're just like super dead. They're going to land those companies. Jeez. I did not think that I was going to get run over this bad when I had that initial thoughtsies, but they kind of just curved out on me there. And maybe it was right to take the Reflector Mage. But, like, I don't know. These are two tough cards to beat. So I like this. I like more removal. I like some sweepers. I tend to not like Gurmag Angler. They have Reflector Mage. I kind of just want to sit in here and get ready to grind. I'm going to cut one of these if we're cutting some creatures. I don't like too many stubborn denials. <coughs> <coughs> Just kind of get ready to sink in to play a longer game. Just like removal and card draw is what we're going to play here. Yeah, they just kind of matched me. I probably should have Collective Brutality in, but Collective Brutality literally only hits like their mana dorks. Everything else is an X3. So I don't really like Brutality that much when it comes to that. Hey, Teddy, how's it going? All right, let's keep this going. I'm going to start off with an Inquisition. We need to make sure to get red lands with our next two archers. And we're doing this, we're leading off this way because we can scry, we can cycle into our card we scry. So this is a weird, it's like a Bant Spirits deck that also has Mausoleum Wanderer. That also has Reflector Mage. So we're going to take the Wanderer because we don't want them to counter our, um, counter this. I did just play against Dredge. Yep, and we read it. Okay, so we hit. So I go like this. A little awkward in that we need lands to like enable this. Oh, thank you just for the bits there, Jay Huey. I appreciate it. I don't really think we want either of these. We are going to take this selfless spirit. Well, this rattle change is also kind of annoying. I think we're just going to take the selfless spirit. Take the rattle change because if they image, like, if I just target it, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah, just Reflector Mage in the Spirits deck. That's what they're doing. So 
definitely a bit of an awkward mana situation here. Maybe I should have cycled last turn. I don't really know why I did this on this turn. It's so stupid. Because I, now I can't dismember this. But they can't really just jam this. Okay, so we know their hand. It would be very bold of them to just like phantasmaling this itself this way. That sounds like a good way to lose the game here. Yep, yeah, no. You were right, Teddy. I should have I should have cycled. Okay. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Then we're gonna hit this, probably end up bolting something, and then battle raging. Because they're gonna image copy my Gurmag Angler more than likely. So we can we can use this as a terminate. Just target it. We know their hand right here. They drew wind sweat teeth. Target nasty. We're gonna bolt this thing. This works because it's a phantasmal image. Play this. Turn nasty sideways. Yield until next end step. Okay, man, I'm impressed that. The pieces came together for Spirit Crew Real Deck and Modern. Yeah, it's just the tribal cards. Really gonna hope that my opponent didn't hit a company here. Well, we're angry. He also might just draw like nothing. Are we just gonna do that to? Play our lands out here. I like to sandbag lands, but we want to play our lands out because we just need thing. Like, eventually, we're going to just need um, more mana because we have so many three mana spells. Oh, captain, my captain. So the last card's Hollow Fountain. Oh, they have one more after that. I guess we go for the old Snap Rage. You get blown out by a path here, which I didn't really think about. Should have done this. Like we're far enough ahead here where we could go like attack. They take five. Yeah, that was so stupid because I could have just attacked and then if they didn't do it, didn't block, just let it happen and snap bolt them. Yeah, I'm all over. I haven't not really played. I gotta like get back into it. I haven't played Shadow in a little while, and I can definitely see that like I miss a thing or two. I don't really like Collective Brutality on the draw, though they have more X ones than I thought. So maybe I want to ditch like a couple discard spells, but I really want to have a, a density of things to do on one. And even discard spelling on one is pretty solid. Yeah, I think we're just going to submit. We're just going to have to play. We also need to like sequence well here because like sometimes we can play into rattle chains we want to try to avoid that if possible this hand's not great but it is a decently quick Ermag angler we have something to do on one. Now well, maybe I should have mulligans. Because like if I just play like land noble hierarch, then I'm in I'm in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I messed up. Should 
for the mulligans. I think. Now we could just get like run over. Try another noble, which is nice. Oh, I had to fetch black red. I, I keep this is like a oh wow. So I guess we just take this captain. Because we have two quellers, which is kind of annoying. I look at taking the path. I should I gotta slow down here and do a little more thinking. Playing I'm playing a little too quickly. Cause like the path and blows up my angler, which I could play angler right now. And like the stubborn denial messes with that too. chains do I just get path the problem is if I just get path I'm not doing anything but what's their turn if they path me then their whole turn is just rattle chains which isn't that bad If I jam, see if I if I fetch the right land, then I had another out. I'm gonna play Angler because it opens up another like they path their turns like not super great. And it lets me um Oh god, it's not very good all over the place. Do they still have a productive turn even if they path this thing? Probably should have boarded this out on the draw, especially considering that we saw um Yes. Especially considering that we saw more um gosh, I can't even the words escape me. So I could play Jay's tick up. I kind of like Jay's tick up. Yeah, I think we're going to play Jace and go up on us. I could go up on them. I'm going to put this on the bottom. Why is Jason against spirits? Because I zoned out. That's why. That is why. I thought we were playing against like a Bant company, like a Knight of the Reliquary deck to start. I don't think you should realistically pick, worry about picking it up. Like, play Shard Fade Control. Not feeling it. They win at me. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. Put this back. Put this back. Let's see what they are doing. They're gonna spell color this. I think they are at least. Yeah, it's like it's like a maybe board. Oh, that's interesting. The self of spirit might mess with us a little bit. I think we're going to just wait because of that spirit. So 
I can go fetch shock to four. Bolt. Fetch shock to four serum visions. And then bolt the rattle chain. Then when they go to act. Now I can't really fetch shock to four because of the selfless spirit and the exalted. So now we're just gonna wait here. Okay. Maybe I was supposed to snap, so I can go, problem is if I go bolt, bolt, snap, bolt, I'm dead. If I go bolt, snap, bolt, I'm dead. Uh, cuz I bolt rattle chains snap bolt self of spirit they sack mausoleum wanderer they crack me for four bolt snap bolt on the hierarch first then on the selfless <clears throat> what we could do is we could bolt a hierarch we can't bolt a hierarch uh, we can't bolt noble We can bolt like rattle chains and then like maybe bounce a noble. We can bolt rattle chains. They hit us to four. Next turn, fetch, we go to two. Bounce this and then figure it out. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to bounce this rat or bolt this rattle chain right now. I know they have a spell card. That's their only card. Now we just untap. No, we got to fetch. Because the top two cards just aren't going to do it. Because I can go... I have three lethal creatures. Even if I bounce a creature, if I bounce Selfless Spirit, then if my opponent attacks with Mausoleum Wanderer, yeah, the top two cards aren't going to do it. So let's fetch. Get another red source too. Oh, we're in trouble. I need like a second removal spell. But even if it's a second removal spell, because of this self spirit, I'm just screwed. Maybe I go like this. All right. 
So there's a push. All right, we're dead, but we might get out of this. Probably should have bounced the Wanderer. Man, what a good game. The only way that I win here is if they quell the Snapcaster. Like, if they quell the Snapcaster... Whoa. Hang on. Now this mausoleum wanderer still gets us because we can't fetch here. Yeah, still dead to the mausoleum wanderer. But hey, maybe they hold it. Yep, they got it. GG's opponent. Yeah, so if they hadn't have done that, we could have actually gone like bounce spell queller. Like if they had just let this happen because they were worried about this, we would have just gone like bounce spell queller. Snapcaster comes into play. Then we Snapcaster Lightning Bolt the M Mausoleum Wanderer. And then we can live another we can live another turn. Tight game. I always have fun playing against Band Spirits. Like it's always like really tight games. But I don't know how to board against that deck. But I don't know if you're supposed to go like full control with like you do against humans. Just kind of a tough, a, a, a tough, a tough way to, tough way to board. But am I supposed to bring in all my control cards or stay low to the ground? His hand is super explosive. I think I'm gonna keep this hand because of these three here. Like if we hit another land drop, it's just a really nice hand. Like it just the, like the explosion is what we're looking for. All right, well we're not ever gonna get to use it this round. Unfortunately. And while this is a good matchup, we have a pretty poor hand for what we're looking for. Alright, better lucky than good. We're in a lot of trouble now. Can you board in a mono removal? Well, you can't board in a necessarily mono removal, right? Because we just don't have that much to bring in. Like, Collective Brutality is not very good against that deck, right? It's kind of slow. It's like you got to tap out on their main phase, which lets the band deck use their mana on your turn. But I do think Jace is too clunky. In game one, all I saw was Reflector Mages. Um...
I'm going to stub this because I have a Snapcaster Mage. And, like, there's no guarantee that we do get to stub anything with this. So we're just going to, like, cash it in while we can. And then hopefully we can get, like, hopefully we go, like, Street Wraith into Fetchland here. I don't think you board in Brutality for that. Like, maybe on the play you do, Teddy, but I don't think you board Brutality in against Bant Spirits on the draw, and I, you might not even board it in on the play. So we might be flashing the Snapcaster Mage in here. Yeah, I think we're going to play Snapcaster Mage, dismember, our, attack for two, dismember our Snapcaster Mage, and two, play two sh Death Shadows. Because, like, we just, like, my, my opponent needs two out of the three cards to work, and we currently can't interact with that, and they're going to have plenty of mana. This is, like, not exactly how I like to do things like this. But this is, like, the world we live in on. But the card's only good on turn two, and you're boarding in two of them. Is it actually good to do that? Like, is that narrow? Gemstone Mine. We're going to have to get pretty fortunate to win this one. Though if we hit like fetch land stub or fetch land um, snapcast to make, we've got a shot. Just because we're going to have some pretty nice closing speed. So if my opponent doesn't already have it. And we did counter their only cantrip, so they would have to naturally have it. And we get to crack them for eight. And then crack them for a 13. They're just dead. <laughs> I mean, we'd be dead if we were dead at this point. We're still going to thought seize and play Gurmag Angler because we unfortunately can't get our can't get our Death Shadows large enough to have the stubborn denial matter. Yeah, that was a banned spirits deck that had Reflector Mage, which was kind of cool. There's no way you just attack. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We gotta take the grace. We have teachings, gemstone mine. So they basically can teachings for one half of the combo here, and then teachings for the other half of the combo. The big question is, do I play Angler? I'll probably just play the Angler. Leave the stuff in the yard. Miss Thoughtseize, that makes sense. So we just got to hope they don't draw it. Because this will get them ad nas. Then they've got three looks at Angel's Grace. Or four looks at... Um, they have seven looks at it, basically. And they can, have a, they can hit a redraw because they have a land. If I'm doing my math right here. So 
the biggest dub bluff. There's no sense in bluffing because they got to go for it, right? Like, they don't really have a lot of choice. One, two, three, four. Four, eight, yeah. Like, they can flash teachings back for whatever it is. Angel's Grace, but, like, we're just back in the same position next turn. So we want these four. So the brutality is being, like, meh. So we're going to cut. I don't need Battle Rage. Lightning bolt's like decent because it can hit the face. It can hit my face. There's four, five, six, seven. Leaving the miser's bolt. Well, I've seen these decks board into um board into Supreme Verdict. Yeah, but, like, I think that, like, so, like, if they board in a ley line, what am I doing with a surgical? Unless I happen to have one of my counter spells to then surgical it. Like, I think that having more options if they don't have ley line to hit whatever it is is better than hitting, bringing in a card that is also bad against ley lines, you know? Like, they're both not good against ley line because you theoretically want the card in the graveyard first. That's just what I've noticed. These decks have boarded into like a more, like a bigger Persian. Okay. Joke's on you. It's not even that good. Tool. Field through this turn. All right. I think we want a third one of those. We're we're gonna get all blooded up. I think there's merit to doing it either way. I think it just depends on what you want to do. Yeah, I don't think that's a real reason to bring it in if we're thinking about if we're thinking about it. Like I think that's a little loose. But it just like doesn't matter, right? I mean either way it's it's pretty there's not a lot going on, I don't think. Oop. I do think I'm gonna do this now because we have a fetch land we can play shadow. You always want to like, okay, that was a good one. You always want to do that when you can, like, you get some value off of it, like knowing the top card. We already have one of those. Let's leave this. We got very worse application. Yeah. No, I, I get that. I get that. So we could totally die next turn. Just super easily die. If we don't hit a counter spell, I'm gonna K command this Lotus in their upkeep. Just shock it, make them discard a card. We hit a counter spell. So good this game. There's not really anything we can play for like one mana here. Yeah, but Lingering Souls like doesn't really see a lot of play anymore. Okay, command line, deal penalty. Yep, that would have been right. No, you're right. You're right, Teddy. Didn't think about that.
So if I let this go, I actually can go like shock, shatter shock. And then like it does add more time onto my clock, but we have another counter spell up. Alternatively, I can just do that next turn. Let's do this first. Let's help make our decision here. So I think I'm gonna just, I think I'm gonna stub this. The next turn I'm gonna hit this and make them discard a card. Oh, you can't chalk and discard. I always forget that. I meant, I meant shatter and discard. I'm, I'm speaking poorly. I'm going to shatter this now. So, target player, destroy target artifact. And now we cut off their mana. Because now they need like two, like they basically need perfects to kill us next turn. Because they need they need two mana sources and two combo pieces, and we're putting ten power on the board. I guess they could play push. <clears throat> if they verdict me, it's going to suck, but I'm surprised they did not crack the end for our knife. So we might as well just attack. Even if they have a knife, I can't beat it because I can't respond to it. Okay. I should have fetched a blue source so I can cantrip into Snapcaster Mage. I guess we'll just go like this. Could have Brutality them if they didn't have a Slay Line. Again, they need Mana Source, perf they need Perfect Perfect Attack. I don't really, I don't, I'm not super surprised they didn't crack loom. Like, because that, that's a resource that you want to be able to keep in play, you know? You want to be able to keep that resource for later in the game. Like, don't crack it if you don't need it. This guy just won this. Won this today. Two more matches and we're going to call it a night. Hopefully we can win both of them. <clears throat> Get this 4-1. But like, why would you... They have four lands to play. So then they just tap the four lands and cast it. It doesn't matter if they crack their thing, right? Seems like a thought scour from being nuts. <clears throat> okay, we're playing against Tron. His hand is no longer good. We're so dead. Wow. <clears throat> We're going to stop this because we got to fill our graveyard. I haven't, like, 
Like I, I want to say that I, I have not played the deck in a long time. I played the shit out of the deck. I played the deck probably a year. Maybe not that quite that long. But it, it goes against a lot. It goes against a lot of what I thought was important for the deck. Like the way that his was built. What I do know about Jun Shadow is that the Jun Shadow deck does destroy combo decks. Like if you want to beat up on combo decks, that's the best deck in the format to do it. That deck is better than Grixis. Better than Grixis. Like Grixis Shadow is very good at beating on combo decks. That deck is better at beating on combo decks than um than I guess I didn't need to do that. It's a nice draw. I like messed my math up. Okay. One, two. So we can never beat this Ugin. Besides the fact that it has to trade with a Gurmag Angler. So I guess we actually take Walking Ballista. Go fetch a Swamp. Then hope we hit a Snapcaster on, for this Ugin. He could have also been nervous, Teddy. That's pretty nerve-wracking magic up there. That's not good. That pretty much ends, like, any realistic chance I had at winning the game, I think. I should have played a land. It didn't really matter. Maybe for that reason I was supposed to leave the thought season in my graveyard. We're just gonna fire this off to keep filling it up here. If we hit a thought seize, so you can just cast. Yeah, we're so we're super dead. So I can just cast this thing. It yeah, definitely probably should have battle rage last turn. Now I think about it. Greedy four color shadow list. Oh, I'm just so dead. If he cracks this, <clears throat> shock cycle. One, two, four, six, nine, ten. We can't even. Goes against Ulamog. Yeah, we're just like dead as a doorknob. Either way. I definitely. Yeah, I, I haven't watched. I didn't get to watch any. Yeah, we're just like super dead. Um, I didn't watch any of the coverage because I went to a wedding that weekend. So I'd like to go see some more of it and watch it again. All right, stub. Let's bring these in. <clears throat> Cut push, cut bolt, Sh 
shave one of these. I like to leave the K commands in because a really tough card to beat is um, <clears throat> a really tough card to beat is like whatever it is. I can't even think. A tough card to beat is O Stone, and that gives you like a couple outs to O Stone. Um, and you can like set something up where you attack. And then, like, you can attack, they go to Worm Coil, you shatter the Worm Coil. God, you're just so high on these Surgicals. I could see if we're gonna bring the surgicals in, I want to cut Snapcaster, but that doesn't work. Also, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna shave. I'm gonna shave Angler on the draw, but on the play, you can get in underneath a relic. I think it's important. I think it's really important to have a threat on two. Like I would rather have. If I'm bringing surgicals in, I don't want Snapcaster. I don't think. Like they work well together. We're just gonna send it like this. I'm gonna change myself. I'm gonna change on the draw. Yeah, you gotta like thought see if you can thought see's a Karn, then that's good. But like generally in this matchup, I really like discard spelling the things that set up Tron, counter spelling the cards that caught that the payoffs for Tron, and then using Coligon's command to get like O Stone and then like post Sanctum Lugan hit. I'll ship this. This is no good. Give me one second. Because they bring in Thought Not Sears and um, they bring in Thought Not Sears and whatever it is. Um, Thought Not Seers, uh, Thrag Tusks, and it's a way to power through like a Worm Coil engine in conjunction with a Battle Rage if you have a Shadow. I almost want to keep this, because like I don't think a random 5 is going to do much better than this. And if we get two looks out of land, we get two out of 17, and then we get a redraw. So we get, we either get two out of 17... Or four out of seventeen, and with two discard spells, this hand's not bad. And it's got a battle rage, so if we hit like land death shadow, this hand's pretty solid. I'm gonna keep. If we have a redraw, we get four looks at a land. If we we can either look at four looks at a land next turn, or two more because we'd have to go over two for that to work. Plus, it's a pretty quick Gurmag Angler if we can get it online. Like, if we hit a fetch land, then it's one, two, three, four cards. And then if we hit another fetch land, then it's Angler on two. Yep. It's not pretty, but it's a land. They put that on top. It's probably like a natural Tron hand. It's an odd card to top. Yeah, we called it. Let's get rid of this O-Stone. 
and then we're going to take the blocking ballista. All right. One, two, three, four, five, not quite. The Rotassiker, we have it, but that's not a legitimate card to play. Get a water grave. I'm going to fetch, just get like a swamp, then leave a thought seize in my graveyard. Like it might matter. Because like they could feel like if we hit a snapcaster mage, we do want to cast like if they hit Ulamog or Wormcoil Engine, they're going to cast that next turn. So it gets Canopy. Oh man, if they have Path to Exile, it's gonna suck. Doesn't mind we move out. Did you hit on me? Yeah, you did. You bastard. There's a Worm Coil Engine too. Oh, it's just a Walking Ballista. Okay. That's still pretty bad. Okay. They put two counters on it. I think I attack play Death Shadow. Because I can, like, block first strike, and then they have to put two counters on it. They have to put two counters on it to get it to trade, and that's that whole turn. So I think, like, I just lose on the spot to a Karn pretty much. But, like, such is life. We got to start getting in there. I'm just going to hope they brick. There's Canopy. So now we're attacking with both because they have to block. All right, so now we pass. Pass again. If they do this, I'm going to battle rage my shadow to make it so that. Well, no, I want to make it so that it's lethal next turn and just hope they don't have anything. The only card they could have that they wouldn't have played is Ulamog. And we're not beating an Ulamog in the next turn anyways. Let's have this be lethal. I'm just going to play this. So if we hit Disdainful Stroke, we can cast it. All right. Angel Strike is a good one. It's a 
Oblivion Stone's not going to do it. Now it does. But we're just in the same spot next turn. But they could hit, they could hit Ulamog, which is the big difference between this turn and last turn. So I feel like their last card's Ulamog. And we're about to get Ulamog into the Stone Age. Here it comes. Oh, we can hit a K command. <sighs> That's tough for you. I don't think Tron's a solid. Like, the only, like, I feel like kind of favored against Tron if I win the die roll, but I feel super not favored against Tron if I don't win the die roll. You talking about my keep? The game one keep? This is going to be the last match of the night. What did we lose to today? We lost to Tron. We lost to Band Spirits. I need help with the Band Spirits matchup. I don't know how to sideboard against that deck. Like, I don't know if I should just be like this, this, and this. Like, it would just be these six cards. Because, like, the two damage removal doesn't sound great. And I would cut, like, a Stubborn Denial. Oh, here we go. Sand Solid. Would cut, like, a Stubborn Denial. And then... Maybe some more expensive things? I don't know. Okay. A little bit of mirror action. Let's take their thoughtsies. So Gurmag Angler is going to be pretty solid here. Tar fires are not going to be that solid besides turning on Delirium. <clears throat> but now they've got Delirium. No, they don't. They don't quite. They actually go far off Delirium because he's on fetch land. Play this out. Bolt myself if I need to. My bolt will trade with their bolt. They could push this, and then they get Delirium, which is kind of kind of rough for the home team. Yeah, is that what you're talking about? Tarmogoyf here would be kind of annoying. They're going to take my shadow. So let's give them Delirium. They took my bolts. That's interesting. So if I just hit a land here. That's really interesting. Wonder why they took that. 
if I just hit a land, don't I just... He's just hoping that he finds a land to be able to kill my shadows. Yeah, there's no delirium. You're just laying the landing. Get a swamp. Which means they've got Liliana the Veil. So a fetch land here would be sick. Not bad. Yeah, we're just going to take this. Take your traverse. Take your thing that finds you a threat, and then hopefully don't hit a fetch land. <coughs> or another traverse. Primal voice is okay. One, two... I guess we just play Angler now. Because it's going to at least, if we get the untap, it's going to turn on our stub. And they're, that's still stranded in there. No, it's no longer stranded. It's okay. We're going to have stub up. They're going to trade Tarfire for Shadow, which is pretty feel baddy. But Tarmogoy is going to be massive. This is a thick Goyf. I don't really want to make this trade. I don't want to two for myself here. I'm just going to play another one. And then pass. As soon as I get a fetch land, it's like over. Oh, much appreciated, Tannen. Thank you, everybody, for coming over from Tannen's stream. I hope you're all having a fantastic night. I hope this podcast is good. I'll be watching it tomorrow. I'll be listening to it tomorrow morning for sure. Fetch land. I really don't want to make this trade. The winning list played K Command, so I'm just going to hold this land for now. So what's podcast night? Yeah, I was planning on watching it, but I've decided to keep playing tonight. I guess I could attack with it, but like, I don't know. Maybe I'm not playing this correctly. Maybe I should be attacking with my Gurmag Angler. Yeah, another stub. Put you to one. Put you to two. You should feel bad. God, Rob Meadows. What would I do without you? What would I do without so much? My basic is terrible. That basic was a shock land. The game would have been over. I just saw your message, Teddy. All right, let's sideboard. So I want this. I want this. Cards I don't want. These four. My gut tells me that I want to go like this. And just go over the top of my opponent. I've I boarded in. I have been liking this Jace in the Shadow Mirrors. <clears throat> because the games happen like one of two ways. Where somebody just runs somebody over and it doesn't really matter. Like they just had that like Thoughtseize. Um, double. Th like that Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize threat. Play that just like runs the other person over. Or you just both exhaust each other with a lot of resources. And these this like a card like this or this. Or these just break the game open. 
So I kind of want to do this. I think this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to do this here. Should have played island, tap grave, battle rage. Yep, 100%. I am. This is why we are ending the stream. I'm getting a little tired. That was the exact right thing to do. Because, like, he would have needed what? Like, dismember or terminate there to not die? Yeah, I was just like a super punt. We're going to keep this, keep anything that. Is close to functional. Yeah, you were right, Teddy. That was no bueno. You mean discard or you're traversing? Probably takes my thought sees. The play the shadow player that usually has the most discard spells beats the other one. That's what I've found. It enables that, like, get under you beat down play. I'm just going to hold this bobble, I guess. So my opponent might not make me use it. I kind of feel bad if they go, like, They'd have gone like Tarmogoyf there because I'm going to 100% push it on their turn. Clear the Delta. We don't want that. So let's go get a black. We need spells at this point. So we can run face first into a Liliana of the Veil and basically lose the game on the spot. Or we can just go like Inquisition and then Thought Scour and then reevaluate next turn. All right, so this K command is annoying. Dismember checks Angler. I think we just take the command because what are they going to do? If we take Traverse then they don't have Delirium, and they can't really do anything. Hey, Nameless. So if I take Traverse, they just have Dismember Kologon's Command, which is going to be pretty slow and clunky. If I take Kologon's Command, then they can Dismember Traverse for a threat, and then we still have something left over. I think we're just going to take the two for one. Because like we kind of have the rest of it set up. Like we have it checked right now. Yeah, but they'll get it, you know. Like they need to like eight. If we take any, if we take either of the instants, they have eight draws to get them delirium. So it's gonna happen. Yeah, see, like, right there. Now they've got it. And that was their draw. But they needed they had eight draws, and those two were both of them. That's kind of funny. Bloodstained Mire. Plus, if I could just eliminate their resources... I doubt they have, like, a Ranger... Dude, a ranger would just like, wow, they have a ranger. Okay. So, like, ranger danger. Oh, man. Well, at least the angler might be able to out. 
off pace what they're doing a little bit. Millover J said. Wearing some good results these days. I've been seeing you. You've been up there. Top eight and like a fiend, nameless. I need to pick that list back up. Just give that another whirl. The problem is that I think they're just dead if they play this Ranger because they're going to have to do a lot of damage to themselves. And then we can clear the way. Then we can theoretically deal with two blockers and kill them. Or we can at least shrink. Well, we can't shrink a shadow. Well, we got him. And got it. All right. So we three twoed two leagues in a row, which kind of feels bad. Wasn't great. What do we lose to? We lost to Blue Moon. We lost to the Mono Red Steamkin deck. We lost to Tron and Bant Bant Spirit. So let's open up our pity chest. We got nothing. Look at the deck list here. And honestly, it might be looting time. Like if the metagame is so um if the metagame turns very vile to like beat the dredge decks, then it might be time. Yeah, we got a two, we got a three, two. I played five leagues with this list, and I've gone four, one, four, one, three, two, three, two, three, two. Which is like nothing super like great to write home about. What is that? That's like Eight. Uh, it's like 17 and 8. 17 and 8 is fine. But it's nothing to be super excited about. So it might be looting time. I don't know. I do not know. Like these feel fine. There's the other list that I want to try out. I mean, nameless, you're like a savage. Where is Ben Jones? Could try this one. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not. This is Ben Jones. Ben Jones won a, won a Grand Prix. With uh, with Death Shadow, or, or yeah, he won a Grand Prix with Death Shadow last year. This is what he's been playing. She's got triple surgical, one more counter spell. He uses a Snapcaster Mage and no Cake Man. What I don't like about Ben's list here is he's so weak to like artifacts. Like various artifacts are just gonna get him. I really don't like Last Hope at the moment. Not a big Last Hope fan right now. But I appreciate everybody showing up and hanging out. On your way out, please hit the follow button. I'll probably be back tomorrow night. Might, only, might play some Jun Shadow tomorrow night, get a little more linear and try that out. But besides that, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day, and we'll see all of you guys tomorrow.